Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show. This is Tony and I have Carla Butard returning to the show today. And this is a powerful message that you may want to share if you know other people who have problems with tormenting spirits. Hope you enjoy it and get a lot out of this show. So I want to welcome Carla Butard back to the A Minute to Midnight show. I think it would have been about the same time last year, I think, maybe the last time we've had you on, Carla. So it's really awesome to be talking to you again. I think it was about this time. Thank you for having me back. It's a real pleasure to be with you. And I think it's a pleasure for us all as well. And for our listeners, it'll be a great show today, I believe, because we're going to be talking about tormenting spirits and things along those lines, which I'm sure uh, will help a lot of people. I hope so. I know that when God showed me some of these things, it was a great help to me whenever the tormenting spirits would show up. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that it will be a help uh, helping people to know how to battle those things whenever they, whenever they come, because they will come. Yes, I think no one's immune to it in some way or another, having to face that at times. So, yes, so um, where do we begin? Well, we can begin right now. Um, I, I, I wanted to just start by sharing a word that I got from the Lord back in 2011 when I was returning from the funeral of Glenn Miller, who was the founder of Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. I believe he was 90 when he died. And um, when I was driving home, that was the year that we had had a really severe drought in Texas. And for some reason, it was just windy, 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 windy. Now, normally we have wind in March, but we had had wind it seemed like every month of the year. And so when I was driving back from his funeral, uh, there was a wide open space of highway. And it, it at times it would feel like the wind was going to like blow my car off the road or turn me over. And so, of course, I'm binding my wheels to the road and, you know, kind of praying along the way. But as I got closer to home, we live in like a um, like the piney woods. So there's trees close to the road. And it was very evident that the way this wind was blowing was not like normal wind. Usually when a wind blows, all the trees will lean in unison, you know, this way or that way. But it happened to be blowing some trees to the left and some trees to the right. And even some trees at the top seemed to be swirling round and round. And so it was so um, unusual that I was looking out of my windshield and I talked to the Lord all the time. It's really good that there's Bluetooth now because people don't know if I'm talking to somebody on the phone. <laughs> but I was talking to the Lord and I just said, Lord, what in the world? This wind is so crazy. And it was almost, I feel like my spiritual eyes were open to see that there were these huge demonic entities flying to and fro in the atmosphere. And some were flying left and some were flying right. And whenever they would swoop past these trees, it was the wake that was causing the trees to move so unnaturally. And I heard in my spirit that the warfare between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness is intensifying. And we're going to start seeing things we've never seen before and hearing about things we've never heard about before, which has proved to be true, um, especially in people's lives, um, on the um, political scene. Everywhere you look, there seems to be unnatural things, demonic, demonic things going on. Okay, so then uh, um, shortly after that, I was in the Word, and this, I felt, was the confirmation of what I heard in the Spirit. And it's in Luke 22, uh, starting at verse 35. This is right after Jesus said to Peter, The crock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny me that thou knowest me. 
And then right after that, Jesus said to them in verse 35, when I sent you without purse and bag and shoes, lacked you anything? And they said nothing. Then he said unto them, but now. See, those two words denote that something is going to be different. But now. He that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his bag. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have a fulfillment. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. So, you know, shortly after this is when Peter takes the sword and cuts the ear off of the soldier yeah. when they came to apprehend Jesus. And how many times have I read that story and it never has occurred to me to ask, where did where'd Peter get a sword? I mean, they didn't carry swords, right? Not Not as a practice. But here they have these swords. Jesus said, sell your garment and buy one. Now, do I think that Jesus is telling us that we need to take up arms? No, I don't personally see it that way. I see it that Jesus is saying that there's now, because of what's fixing to happen, there is going to be battles. Yeah. And we have battles. And yet, in Ephesians 6, 12, we're told, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So to me, if we are not battling flesh and blood, then we had better learn how to fight in the spirit realm. So, you know, Satan is an opportunist. You know, when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came to Jesus when he was in what what Satan thought was a weakened condition because he hadn't eaten and he was hungry. And what does he say to Jesus? Um, he says, if you are the son of God. Don't you think that is an interesting statement that Satan would be saying to Jesus? Getting the him son to of try, God? Trying to get him to cause him to doubt himself, I guess. Exactly. And so... We have to know that if Satan is going to come at Jesus with things like that, he's going to be coming at us with things with things like that. I call those tormenting spirits. You know, he's trying to get him to doubt himself. But how many times? I mean, I can remember when I first began to get it. And for instance, dominion. When I started exercising dominion in the spirit realm, I would have people say, who do you think you are? You know, just like that. And they were Christians, believers, but they would they would try to make me feel inadequate or almost ridiculous for using a power that God gave to us. And so, yes, those tormenting spirits will come. And and I can know from the emails that I get from people, prayer requests that I get from people, um, cr- different crises that people are going through, that those tormenting spirits are working over time. They are intensifying and they have a purpose. They have a purpose. And that is to distract us. You know, if we could look at these things when they come as, wait a minute now, what is this trying to pull me away from? I think I may have shared the last time. I'm not sure. But, you know, God has taught me over the years, sometimes through dreams, sometimes through natural things that happen. But in 2007, I had a dream. Well, I also had a prophetic dream back in 1988, and but this one, the crocodile dream, was um, there was a deck that went. I was standing on 
like the shore of an island. I didn't know where I was because my back was to the land, but the water in front of me was vast. It was an ocean, a sea. It, the water was crystal clear and beautiful water. It was like water I've never seen with my natural eyes except on television or in a movie or something because the Gulf of Mexico that I grew up uh, swimming in and everything is kind of a dirty water. It's sandy and, you know, it might get blue way out there, but it's not water like was in this dream. And there was a deck that went straight out about 40 yards and then it went to the right and then it came back to the land. And it was only about six inches above the water and there was no railing or anything. And there were a group of people on the right deck, and they had their backs to the center. They're looking out into the water at something. Well, I was coming up the left deck to go join them. And when I got about halfway up that deck in the water that was that was uh, boundaried by this deck, And the water inside there, for some reason, because it was the same water that was on the other side of the deck, but it was black and oily looking. And so when I got about halfway up, this huge crocodile just surfaced, just floated, and the oily water was rolling off of its back. And the tail was where I was standing. The nose was pointed at the other people. The stomach of this crocodile, it was a supernatural evil crocodile because the stomach was about four feet wide and it was as big, you know, lengthwise and otherwise. Well, I was startled when I saw it and I was going to yell at the people. But before I could say a word, the crocodile moved with the sound of light just like lightning. It was up on that deck, raised its, opened its mouth and swallowed the leader of those people in one gulp. The people scattered and then the crocodile was back down in the water and now he's looking at me. Now, this is a dream. Yeah. I thought, okay, I'm next on the menu. And I was terrified. I mean, my I was so filled with fright, but it only lasted for a split second. The next thing I knew, you know how you have a beach ball and it kind of deflates? Yeah. And it's kind of soft. Yeah. And you open that little valve and you blow into it and the ball is firm again. Yeah. Well, that's the feeling that came into my body. It was a force that came up into my body. And as I was filled with this force, my right arm flew out. And with my index finger, I pointed at that crocodile. And I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And when I did, the crocodile rolled over on its back dead. Now, I am beginning to (laughs) understand the power in the name of Jesus, even though I've always known, yeah. you know, that there's power in the name of Jesus, but God demonstrated it in this dream to where it gave me a confidence. Okay. And so that if anything ever pops up that would frighten me, that is the way I will deal with it. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I had um, I heard a testimony one time by Frank Marzullo Sr., who kind of mentored me a bit, and he said that one time this man came into a meeting, sat down in the back, had hatred in his eyes, and at one point during the service, the man who was huge, and Frank Marzullo was kind of a slight man, small, but had a voice of a giant, <laughs> and um The man was coming up the aisle and he said, and he had murder in his eyes. And he pointed at that man and said, the blood of Jesus between me and thee. And the man hit like a plexiglass wall, fell on the floor and was trying to get up, but couldn't. See, that's, we need to understand these, the power that we have in Jesus Christ, because days are coming that we will need to 
know these things. And see, a sword, you cannot fight a demon with a sword or a gun or a cannon or a bomb or anything. This is a spiritual battle that we are in right here on the earth. Okay, so one day I was talking to my son about tormenting spirits. And as happens with me on more than one occasion, I will begin to talk to him about what he is talking about. But words come out of my mouth that I did not intellectually plan to say. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he had a tormentor. And uh, he was a new doctor in a hospital, and this older doctor was giving him a fit. And I told my son, Wade, this is this is not, listen, your your battle is not with flesh and blood. This is a spirit in this man that is causing you to be tormented. And we have to fight it on that level. I said, this is how it works. And this is what I didn't know that I heard come out of my mouth. Okay, so this man is is saying something to you that is a source of torment. He is saying something to you that you know in your heart because you know who you are, that what he is saying is not true. So that thought is projected into your mind. And then you start thinking about the thought. And sometimes we even think the thought is our thought. It may not be a human being that projects the thought. It might be Satan himself who projects the thought. Or he, Satan will even use other Christians to project a thought to you. I've had that happen. Yeah. Okay, so we start thinking about the thought, and it's a conflict in our mind. Now we find ourselves trying to defend ourselves from the thought or um, convince ourselves that this thought shouldn't even be, which causes a conflict in your mind, and we are we are created to live in peace. So what happens is your brain begins to secrete chemicals that shouldn't be there. I mean, you know, they're there because our bodies react to things, but they shouldn't be there. Now these chemicals are being secreted. These chemicals get into your bloodstream. They now have... Uh, power over your uh, blood pressure, over your heart rate, over your digestive system, over your muscles, your your tendons, your your blood vessels. It has an effect over your whole body, which becomes a feeling, right? Yeah. Now it's a feeling yeah. in your body. Okay. So now let me stop right here to say this. God is looking for people who will agree with his word and proclaim his word. But guess what? Satan is doing the same thing. He's looking for people who will agree with his word. See, that's what he did to Eve. He came, Satan came to Eve and said, did God really say See, so now this feeling is in our body, whatever the conflict is, and or whatever the torment is, really. Um, And then the feeling, because we are human beings and we are relational, we like to tell people how we feel. And then the minute the feeling comes out of your mouth, that's backed by the thought, that's backed by the spirit that projects the thought, you've come in agreement with Satan. Great point. Very good and point. That, and that is the danger in, that's why we should never follow our feelings. The, this our is, feel- I'll just interrupt for a minute. You have no idea. This is just so in line with some stuff I've been reading um, lately and thinking along these lines and you're just reiterating it. It's, it's definitely the Holy Spirit because 
uh, you wouldn't have known. <laughs> you know, no. that this is the, tra- the line of thought I've been going down and thinking about a lot of late, and you're just reiterating it. So carry on. I'm just saying this is amazing timing. It was amazing to me to see the process. And and I was explaining this to a couple one day who the wife was in a a real place of torment. And and she kept saying, just really feel like this. And I just really feel like that. And, And that's when I said, you know, I just need to stop you for a minute. Because what I hear you saying is what you're feeling And those feelings that you have become convinced are your thoughts. You're owning them by, you know, by expressing them that the tormenting spirit that's tormenting you has convinced you that it is right. And none of these things line up with the word of God. That's what I said to my son. Is that true what this man is saying? Well, no, mom. I said, I'm trying to get you to, Mm. I know it's not. You need to know that it's not. And you need to learn. And we as Christians, the body of Christ need, and we hear these scriptures all the time, but what we need to do is in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, it says, well, I have it, but I don't have it word for word. Let me go to it because I don't like to misquote the scripture. Okay, verse 3, 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. But sadly, most of us spend a lot of time warring in the flesh. Yeah. We're warring with our boss, our husband, our children, our, you know, in this Again, we are wrestling not with flesh and blood. We are spirit people walking around in a flesh body. Yeah. And and that even in that there's a conflict. And this is what is the hardest thing to explain to people who do not believe that Christians can have demons. That's the hardest thing to get them to understand. This, they can't touch your spirit, but they can work in your flesh and in your soul. Mm. I mean, all we have to do is look at somebody have a big old temper tantrum or go into road rage. or um, and, and I'm talking, I've seen Christians have meltdowns and, you know, screaming matches with, I mean, that's, listen, that's not. That doesn't come out of our spirit. That that's a, anger is an evil spirit. Fear is an evil spirit. Um, people who have spirits of control that is an evil spirit. It's not part of our um, personality. And for so long before I knew about demons and spirits and how they work, I thought they were part of me, which. That's what Satan wants us to believe. I mean, he he had me so believing that I was this evil person that I hated myself. He had me in self-hatred. At one time, I was so deep into depression that if I wasn't such a coward, I would have been suicidal. I just didn't want to live anymore. I was like Job saying, let the day perish in which I was born, you know, but but that's that's that is. The area of the enemy. So in uh, we in verse three, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. See, we can't take a sword and fight this, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and tormenting spirits like to form a stronghold in our minds. We have to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's the word. We, we, we have to bring our thoughts in line with God's word. 
not the devil's word, not the tormentor's word. And when we can do that, then we'll be more, we, we will not go as deep down in the pit as we used to. So the importance, what, what I try to get people to realize is begin to, if you can recognize that process, first the thought and then the conflict and then those chemicals are going and then you have a feeling. And when you start having these feelings, that should tell you right there, whoa, wait a minute, especially because the feelings are causing bad things to happen. You know, I I have people tell me all the time, all you ever talk about is demons and curses and all of that. Well, you know, we, we inherit blessings too. I said, yeah, but are those causing you any problems? (laughs) True. I mean, I want to help you with what's causing you problems. Yes, we do. And we rejoice in those blessings, but I don't need to help you in your blessings. You need help in the area where Satan is beating you up and bullying you. And see, at a time in our lives, my husband and I, back in 90, um, well, it it was around 97 when our 16-year-old went into rebellion, um, our daughter was beginning to sneak out of the house. We didn't even know it. Somebody else told us. And then our finances were in trouble. The IRS had put a lien against our property. I mean, it was like it was like everything was crumbling underneath us. And I didn't have I didn't have a clue as to what was going on. Because up until that time, I was this happy little Christian mom raising her children. Everything had been beautiful and and then all of a sudden it wasn't. And I didn't have any idea how to fight this enemy when he started coming into our house. And and to me, that is an area of weakness throughout the body of Christ. We're not taught about these tormenting spirits. We're not taught about the wiles of the enemy and how he will come and, and what to do when he comes. I, I describe it like like Satan walked into our house and gave me a sucker punch. And for about a year, I laid on the floor going, <laughs> <laughs> you know, couldn't yeah. catch my breath. Yeah. It was terrible. And, you know, once God told me what was going on, he said, let me tell you what's going on. I've given you a work to do and you're doing it and and you won't quit. The devil's tried to kill you. Actually, I had to have a. Right after I got saved, I had a serious surgery, hemorrhaged, and almost died. Uh, my fi- uh, one of my babies had, as soon as he was born, he had to go into neonatal intensive care. This is the one who, I mean, Satan's been trying to kill him since he was born, mm. and he has a prophetic gifting on his life. I saw him prophesy to his daddy one day, and I was shocked. I said, no wonder the devil is trying to kill him. So it's a real fight. So at this time, I was having what I recognize now as anxiety attacks. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I couldn't even breathe. And one night, I mean, I was praying. I was crying out to God, crying out to God. And listen, this this is this this is the encounter with God that changed my life. I was praying, my children, my children, my children. And God said, why are you coming to me with this? And I was like, what? I mean, like, who else is there? And he said, did I say to you that if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, that you would ask me to move your mountain? And I had to stop and think about that scripture. No, Lord, I'm pretty sure it says that if I have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, it says, ye shall say to the mountain. And it reminded me of Moses when he had his back against the Red Sea 
The people were all standing there. They couldn't go any farther. Pharaoh is hot on their trail, coming to get them. And Moses is standing on that rock. Fear not, fear not. Today you will see the hand of the Lord and you will see the Egyptians no more and he will fight for you. And God interrupted him. Jot this down. It's in Exodus 14. And this is what God said to Moses. And this is this is what I remembered when God interrupted me because I had read the Bible. I, I had the word of God in me and the Holy Ghost will bring it to your remembrance when you have need of it, right? Yeah. So here in Exodus 14, in verse 13, it says, And Moses said unto, unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Now, Moses had no knowledge of that. But when he began to cry out, he began to prophesy. Mm, yeah, good point. He began to prophesy out of his desire for what he wanted to happen. Okay, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Same thing he said to me. He said, Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now, the people were facing the Red Sea. That looked like a totally impossible situation. Then he said to Moses, but lift up thy rod. Now, the rod was given to Moses. The definition of a rod is for ruling, such as a scepter. A scepter is a staff born by a sovereign, born as in carried by, a sovereign as an emblem of authority. Royals have it. Royal or imperial authority and sovereignty. That's what a scepter, that's what a king uses a scepter for. And yet he he's telling Moses, raise up thy rod. And stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And in verse 21, it says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. See, God said it. Moses obeyed. And the Lord did it. That's the process. Mm, very, very, very good. I mean, it's it's uh, it makes so much sense, and yet we try and get it backwards so often, don't we? Yes, yes. And see what what I begin to realize and see as a, another problem throughout the body of Christ is that we are asking God to do things that He has given us the power and authority. To do. Yep. See, when Jesus came, he had his 12 disciples, and let's not forget one was a devil. Yeah. But he had 12 disciples, and what he did when he walked with the 12 disciples was demonstrate the principles of the kingdom of God on the earth. When they were in the boat, he stood up and spoke to the winds and the waves, and they obeyed him. And yet the disciples were saying, Jesus, wake up. Yes. We're going to die. Yeah. And he said, oh, you of little faith, how long will I be with you? Here he is trying. He demonstrated all these things to the disciples, and I'm not criticizing them. I mean, some people have walked with the Lord for I've been walking with the Lord for 40 years, and I didn't learn this stuff until, you know, the last 15 years or so. So they only had three years with Jesus. But, you know, they saw him raise the dead. They saw him multiply bread and fish. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him. Get money that he needed 
out of a fish's mouth. Yeah. What they saw, all these things, opening the eyes of the blind, casting out demons. And, and yet, hey, we're disciples, aren't we? Yes. And he said that we, the same works that he did, we would do also. It was commissioned in Matthew chapter 10. I think what the, one, I think one thing that can happen is, you know, people get a victory in a certain area, and I'm just thinking, listening as to what you're saying there, and, and you know, and then they they learn how to exercise it over that one area, but then something comes along like the the storm, and Jesus in that case there, which was different than feeding five thousand, and they, and people get thrown by a something that they haven't dealt with before. It's like they've yes. they managed to learn. I mean, I can look at it from my own life. You know, you learn how to deal with one thing, and so that comes up again, and you get really easy to get the authority, and you do it. But bam, then something blindsides you. It's a completely different problem, and we almost go to pieces instead of using the same process. Right, that's right. Well, see, whenever I was waking up, unable to breathe, again, God gave me a dream, and it was. David, it was the story of David and Goliath. And in the dream, I was David. And Goliath was the IRS. That's who was, (laughs) that's who, you know, they were the monster at the time, you know. (laughs) And, And I had never stopped to, you know, the story of David and Goliath was that to me. It was a story of David versus the giant. But actually, Goliath, represents Satan, the enemy. And in this dream, when I woke up, I was so excited because, of course, I I slew the giant. Mm. And so I, I woke up very excited. Hey, I didn't have trouble breathing that night. I woke up very excited and I went to my Bible because I wanted to know what else is there, Lord? What what are you trying to show me in this dream? So as I read it, I want you to see the tormentor in this. And there are many, um, many examples in the Bible. There's Samuel um, and Saul in 1 Samuel 9, when Saul told Sam, uh, when Samuel told Saul what he was going to be doing, and he goes, yeah, but I'm in the smallest tribe, and my family is the least of all families. You see where his torment was. And then there was also, um, well, Moses, when God commissioned him, he says, Lord, I'm not eloquent. He couldn't speak. You know, he, I'm slow of speech and of a slow tongue. You see where his area of torment was, and not to forget Mephibosheth. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. King David summons him, and he comes before the king and says, what is thy servant that thou shouldst look upon such a dead dog as I am? You see where his torment was? Yeah. And then there was Gideon. And then, of course, when Satan came to Jesus and said, if thou be the son of God. Oh, my goodness. But in David and Goliath, We know the story. And of course, when David showed up, his brothers, oh my goodness, they they tormented David. Here it is. It's in um, verse 28, 1 Samuel 17, 28. It says, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David and said, why camest thou down here? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy God and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou might see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? See, so here's the brother tormenting David. And so now we're going to hear how Goliath tormented David. It says in... um, Verse 41, and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man who bore the shield before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Now that means ridiculed. 
he ridiculed David, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Fair means bright and beautiful, and ruddy means rosy, blushed, and beautiful. So, see, David wasn't this burly, manly-looking guy. Yeah. He was He was a little pretty, you know? He was pretty. He didn't look like what they thought he should look like or, or um, the giant. You know, yeah. he's making fun of him. Yeah. And the Philistines said unto David, am, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Now, a stave is like a new shoot on a plant that's real tender. You can just pinch it off with your thumbnail. That's what he's saying to David. Uh, yep. <laughs> You're just nothing, buddy. Yeah. And then in 44, it says, And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, Now, he was no coward. He said, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. Now he's prophesying. This day the Lord will deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee. And take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Now that is courage. I reckon. We know the rest of the story. So David Engage the warfare, but God won it. Yes. The same as it is with us. We, But we do have to engage in the warfare. And I believe that this time that we are living in right now is that time. That time when the warfare is intensifying, it's time for us to be girded up and know how to Fight the enemy when he comes. Now, what I learned in this story, okay, first of all, Satan is a liar. We all know that. He's a liar. There is no truth in him. My torment at that time, he was telling uh, telling me, y'all are going to lose your house. You're going to lose your business. I've already got all three of your kids and this and that and the other. And I mean, he was breathing hot down the back of our necks. And what I learned in this story was to turn the table. David turned almost the very words that Goliath spoke to him, turned them around back on him. So what I learned from that was when that tormenting spirit that would cause me not to be able to breathe would show up, I would turn the table. On the enemy. When he would say, You're going to lose your house, I would say, Satan, you're a liar. And if, if what you just said is a lie, then the very opposite of that is the truth. So that means we are not going to lose our house. And I would start praising God that we were not going to lose our house. When he would come whisper to me, I've got all three of your kids. Satan, you're a liar. And because you're a liar, the opposite of what you're saying is true. Therefore, you don't have all three of my kids. Mm. And I would remind him of the day they were saved and baptized into Jesus Christ. And they belong to him. They may be walking in disobedience right now, but God is going to turn. See, then I start prophesying. God has told me he's going to turn everything that you brought into their lives for destruction. He's going to turn it around for their good and his glory. And I would start praising God. Let me tell you, Satan won't stick around very long for that. No. <laughs> he doesn't like yeah. it. Awesome. So uh, this this teaching is really um, to um, encourage people to 
remember who you are in Christ. Um, everything that Jesus Christ is now, sitting victoriously at the right hand of God the Father, he left here so that he could send himself. There was only one of him walking on this earth when he was here. But now, seated at the right hand of God the Father, he sends himself into each one who will believe on him. So that the work that he started here, what does it say? It says that he, the Son of God, was manifest to destroy the works of of the devil. We don't have to look very far to see the works of the devil. We can see the school shootings. We can look in our government. We can look everywhere and see the works of the devil. And we have power over all the power of the enemy. What are we doing with the power that God has given us? That's what I want to stir the body of Christ up to begin to do. There's too many sitting in the pews of churches that are beat up, whipped, sick, broke, marriages falling apart, children going crazy. No. That it's is, time to yeah, change that. That's very, very good, very encouraging. Uh, and, and what about those that are listening that are in this situation um, in terms of a prayer, have you got something that they can use, you know, as an example, for example, you know, for example? Well, I have, um, I first would like to pray a prayer of deliverance. Yes, this is, this is what you have to do when the tormentor comes. We have been given tools we, Jesus Christ himself gave us the keys that whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And that's the realm where the spiritual warfare is taking place. So if, you, um, if you're being tormented in your finances or tormented in your children or tormented in your body with an infirmity, tormented in your mind with mental confusion or whatever, these are all tormenting spirits and so now when a tormenting spirit comes i just say you tormenting spirit that is causing this pain in my arm i bind you and break your power and command you to get out of me in jesus name that is what we've been given jesus said in my name you shall cast out devils and these things are devils that are causing these torments. So it, the process is very easy. Learn to recognize it quickly. Bind it, break its power, and command it to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness, he, he shed his blood that we could be healed. Sicknesses are evil spirits. It says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost in power, who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. If you've got a sickness in your body, that is an oppression from the devil. And if they needed healing and God healed them, then it was from the enemy because he came to destroy the works of the enemy. So we need to learn to do the same thing. If you Listen, husbands have a power in the home that is as great as the power that Jesus Christ has in the church. If men are listening... I, I, I almost challenge you to begin to stand in the place that Jesus Christ has given you. It's a position and it has a level of authority and power and an anointing. In Ephesians 5.23, it says the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. 
And he, the husband, that's the subject of the sentence, the husband is the Savior, little s. Everywhere else in the New Testament, Savior is capitalized and talking about Jesus. But in that scripture, it's a little s, and it's talking about the husband being the Savior of the body, which is the little body, which is the family. And there's great power there. So, husbands, if your wife is being tormented as the priest of the home, you have the same anointing and power that Jesus has in the church. Come against that thing. You spirit that is causing this torment to my wife, you don't even have to know the name of it. You spirit that's causing my wife to have fear. Or you spirit that's causing my wife this headache. You spirit that's causing my wife to worry. I bind you and break your power and I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. When I started asking my husband to do that for me, it's amazing. It's powerful. Wow. I'm I'm, hope there will be a lot of people that will take this on board and go and actually make a change as a result of that. Yeah, because, you you know, you could transform homes and families. Amen. And children even. I teach my little grandchildren, you know, if if their mama has is sick. In fact, they've called. Uh, Grammy, mama is sick. I said, go lay hands on her. Take the phone right now and go lay hands on her. And I teach them how to pray. You sickness that's in my mama's body, I bind you and break your power and command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not rocket science, but you know what? The devil doesn't want you to do it. And and it is, do you know how hard it is for people to do that? Because we've not been taught how to do it or practiced it. So the devil the devil is standing right there to make you feel like a fool. The first time I took dominion over the weather, my dog was, we live on acreage and the dog was way out and he heard me talking, but he didn't see anybody. So he comes running and sits right in front of me, wagging his tail. Like she talking to me. Yeah. Who's she talking to? Yeah. I mean, the devil will make you want to feel like an idiot. Yeah. And it's, it is hard to do at first, but once you begin to do it, 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 it becomes easier and easier and more and more effective because it's not going to happen unless you do it. And have, have you got um, a website still, Carla, that you can give our listeners? I do. It's um, CarlaButod.com. That'll take you there. And there are some prayers on there. Um, I'm adding some new ones and putting some new messages up. Um, In fact, I may put this tormenting spirit message um, on the website because people look for things like that. You know, whatever's going on with them, that's what they search out. And so there's a lot of tormented people in the world today. And And there's a a lot of people that have been speaking about this very thing of late. I've noticed it. So is there, can you pray for our, our listeners that may be going sure. through this? Sure, I would love to. Well, Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I cover each listener with the blood of Jesus. And I call almighty angels to come and do warfare in the heavens that we can have an open heaven right now. And I bind those tormenting spirits that are tormenting God's people. I bind the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit that is against everything that has to do with Jesus. Those tormenting Antichrist spirit, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of fear, for we have not been given the spirit of fear. I bind that spirit of fear right now break its power, and command it to go in the name of Jesus. It says, fear hath torment. And we know that's true. So all you tormenting spirits bringing fear and worry and anxiety and sleep problems and digestive problems and heart problems and mental problems, I bind you now in the name of Jesus Christ and I command you to go. I command Spirits of insanity to come out of the mind in Jesus' name. And I loose, I activate right now the mind of Christ. For the word says, for ye have the mind of Christ. 
If you're having trouble with your mind, just put your hand on your head and say, I activate the mind of Christ right now in Jesus' name. I command all confusion, forgetfulness, hearing voices, voices of ridicule, voices of disdain, inferiority complexes. I command all those tormenting spirits to go. I bind you and break your power off God's people and command you to go in the name of Jesus. I even break the tormenting spirits of words spoken curses, even self-inflicted words spoken curses. I'm so stupid. I can't ever do anything right. I break those curses now in the name of Jesus and command those tormenting spirits to go in Jesus name. I bind the spirit of the bully. That's what That's what Satan is, is a bully, the mean man spirit. I bind that mean man spirit and break its power off of God's people in Jesus' name. I come against the accuser of the brethren, those tormenting spirits that are constantly accusing, accusing with guilt and shame and self-condemnation and self-hatred and self-consciousness and critical spirits. I bind you and break your power and command you to go. I speak to the lying spirits to shut up and go in the name of Jesus Christ. All spirits that say, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this anymore. Spirits, the quitting spirits, the fainting spirits, spirits of self-destruction, death wishes, suicidal thoughts. I bind you in the name of Jesus and break your power and command you to go in the name of Jesus. All hopelessness, despair, oppression, depression, sadness, the spirit of grief, the spirit of regret. I bind you and break your power and command you to go. Uh, Death, uh, suicidal thoughts of hanging yourself, dying in an overdose, shooting yourself, running head in head on to somebody to die or slitting your wrist, all those cutting spirits, go in the name of Jesus. All spirits of suicide, I break your power. I bind and break that spirit of death in the name of Jesus Christ and command you to go in Jesus' name. And I loose the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus upon God's people. I come against the fear of man. Fear of man, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of life in Jesus' name, fear of the future, fear of infirmity, all those tormenting spirits of of coming down with um, Alzheimer's and cancer. I bind all of those tormenting spirits of infirmities in Jesus' name and command you to go. Now, I come against all mental, emotional, and physical torments right now in Jesus' name. I speak to those tormenting spirits in your body. I speak to the tormenting spirits in your mind. I speak to the tormenting spirits in your emotion. I bind those tormentors, break their power, and command them to go now in the name of Jesus. All vexation, all harassing spirits, all troubling spirits, I break your power off God's people and command you to go in the name of Jesus. Christ. And now, Father, I loose upon your people encouragement. I loose upon them courage, the spirits of power and might. Oh, God, I loose upon them uh, the spirits to be vitally active, energetic, and forceful in the name of Jesus, putting the devil on the defense instead of running from him. I I ask for a fresh anointing today of your love. Father, you said that perfect love casts out fear. So if there's anybody, Father, who needs a a greater, a greater portion of your love, a greater anointing, Father, I ask that you would circumcise their hearts to receive the fullness of your love uh, that would cast out all fear. I ask for a fresh anointing of joy and peace and strength to endure. And Father, right now, I just bind every spirit of backlash and retaliation from the enemy. I cover them. I surround them with mighty angels, shoulder to shoulder, that no evil penetrate. And we thank you, O God, for the name 
the name of the one who came to destroy the works of the enemy, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for his shed blood, for the permission and even the commission to use his name to destroy the works of the devil. We thank you for that. We thank you for the victory that is ours. But we must enter into it and appropriate it to see that victory. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you, Lord. We love you so much. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful. Great, great message, great prayer at the end. I'm sure this will be a great benefit and a great blessing to our listeners. Thank you so much, Carla, for being on our show again today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. (laughs) Yes, I was going to say the same thing. (laughs) No, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Bless you too, Carla. Amen. Well, I thought that was a really great interview with Carla. And don't forget you can find all of our interviews on our website, a minute to midnight.com, as well as on YouTube and also on iTunes. And A Minute to Midnight is run 100% by donations. You can find ways to donate to us on our website, a minute to midnight.com, and we really do appreciate the people that help us to keep this show running because we certainly couldn't do it without your help. I write, play, and record all the music in our shows as well. And you can find some music on our website for download if you want it for free as well. I think that's it for this show. We will catch you in another show shortly. Uh, Until then, God bless and have a great week.